Welcome to our homestead, friends. I am glad you are here. I know all of you are working hard on your homesteads right now, but you're probably asking yourself the question, can I ever take a break? Can I ever take a vacation from my homestead? Well, you can, but it's going to require a few things. Let's talk about those today. Well, I have to admit, I love vacations, but who doesn't? You can go on a vacation to rest. You can go on a vacation to visit family. You can go on a vacation to help others. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and I like to do all of those. But how do you leave your homestead? Well, timing is one thing that you have to think about when leaving your homestead, especially if you have a lot done on it, meaning you have a lot of life, livestock, you've got a lot of crops planted, you've got a lot of infrastructure and things set up already. So it's a myth that you can't leave your homestead at all, that you are married to it, that you're glued to it, never to ever step foot off it again. That's simply not true. But if you get that timing correct, you certainly can take a break. And that's even more needed if you are working a full-time job and homesteading at the same time. So with timing, it comes down to where you live and what you have going on on your property, what crops you have in the ground, or if you are in a subtropical climate, whatever it may be. So down here in zone 8B in Texas, we have a very short winter and that is a perfect time to take a break. However, the seed starting for Texas, for this zone, is very fast. It's in January, so I'm already into that for this year. And for us, also in the dead of summer is a great time to leave. So when it's so hot out here, nothing will grow, we can take off for a short period of time. So I'm gonna talk about a few more things that you need to do in order to take a vacation from your homestead, but, even with all these things that I'm talking about implemented, you still may come home to a problem or two. And I'm gonna talk about what's going on on our homestead right now because we just got back from a vacation. Okay, the other thing is planning. Plan, plan, plan. Write it down, save the money, save the date because if you never do that, then you will never get out. Because there is always something to do. As you and I know, there is always something to work on. There is always a job. There is always something to take care of. There's always something to weed. There is never a perfect time to leave. But for mental health or whatever, you need to sometimes get away. And friends, everyone gets burned out. But in thinking about this a little bit, while thinking about this topic for this video, I thought that anyone out homesteading has a real purpose for it. And I talked about that in a previous video. You've got a real purpose for being here. It is for self-sufficiency, uh, living a more quiet lifestyle, and it is a blessing to be out here and away from the city and to be able to provide for yourself and rely on God to provide for you. So do you really want to take a break from that? Because it is such a blessing and you have struggled to get out and be able to homestead, do you want to leave that? Well, sometimes things can get a little overwhelming, but if it's a truly a survival situation, if you're truly growing all your food to feed your family because you have to, then getting away is really not an option. So this is something I've struggled with about leaving the property, about leaving the homestead. However, I have family in other states that I miss and I want to visit. My brother, my mother, my sisters, all of that. Uh, my wife has family overseas that we miss and my children miss. So we want to be able to go and visit them. Also, we want to be able to go on mission trips, I have some speaking engagements sometimes that I'm asked to do in other parts of the country and also to be able to go on what's called a, a camp meeting or it's a revival camp meeting for our church. They are necessary and those are the type of vacations that I really like to do. If you, if you can call them vacations, I, I guess they are. They're a break from my homestead. 
So again, remember when planning things out, your homestead is going to be seasonal and it's going to be dependent on where you live and what time you need to get crops in, what time you need to harvest, when you need to you know, take care of the animals, whatever it may be. You are going to need to figure out all those things, put them down on paper and think about the best time for you to be able to take a break. So if you want to take a break from your homestead for any period of time, you're going to have to have systems set up so that things can kind of run smoothly while you're not here. Now what I'm talking about is like a drip irrigation system for your garden or your greenhouse or automatic feeders and waterers for your animals that you have left here. And those systems can also include a system of friends and neighbors that can help you when you are gone. We had some friends and a neighbor stop by recently to check on things. And unfortunately, during the deep freeze that just happened in Texas, we weren't able to save everything, but that's okay because we needed to take that break. Let me talk about where I was for a few short minutes. So I was asked to be a speaker at an agriculture conference. And this agriculture conference is called the Adventist Agricultural Association. And it is attached to our church. And this conference usually has about a thousand people at it. It happens either in Florida or Texas or California, and it rotates between the three locations. And January is usually when it happens. And that is the perfect time for all of the farmers that attend to be able to come there. And this conference actually is more like a homesteading conference. I actually taught a class on solar systems. And I'm not paid to do so. This is a volunteer effort as part of a ministry that I can be able to help those who are looking to get off grid with basic information on how to put a solar system together. And there are a ton of classes at this conference like basic chainsaw maintenance and welding and how to heat your home with wood during the winter, also growing uh, highly nutritious food, starting a market garden, a whole bunch of things. So that was a blessing to be able to attend and I hope to do it again someday. So even though I have systems in place, I had heaters on, I had feeders going, I had watering things turned off because I knew there was a freeze coming. Even though I had neighbors stop by and friends stop by, there is no perfect time to leave your homestead. And let me show you what I'm talking about. First, we've got the greenhouse. And as you can see, a lot died. And that's because the heater that we have on that propane tank over there in the background needs to be manually turned on. And my friends and neighbors don't live close enough to come over here every night and then in the morning to turn it on and turn it off. I don't have any automatic systems in here. I don't have any electricity to this greenhouse. So I just had to weather the storm and understand that things were probably going to die. And it is a little stinky in here because things are starting to rot. The only things that really made it through are the carrots, maybe a little bit of the broccoli, although that looks pretty hard hit, some of the cabbage, even the kale got hit hard. It was that cold here. I think it was about 14 degrees, 13 degrees, something like that. But there was about a quarter inch of ice on everything as well. The morning we left to drive to uh, Florida for that conference. You can see the carrots look great. They just kind of laughed off the freeze. They didn't really care about it at all. And behind me, yeah, I've got some oregano and rosemary and mint, and none of those mind the cold at all or a freeze at all. In front of me, some Chinese cabbage. Obviously that got destroyed, but behind it, I had some Brussels sprouts. They were looking good, but it doesn't look like they took the freeze that well. Then of course behind me, my poor lime trees got destroyed. Usually they come back, but uh, they do not look good this time. And onions don't mind a freeze at all. Well, then we have the chicken coop and I talked about water earlier. I have everything insulated, but you know, a deep freeze is going to pop PVC pipe somewhere. I've got two leaks. I had a friend come over and he saw one one night and then the other one he heard in this chicken coop the next night when I sent him over to just check things out because I was worried about it. We had a heat lamp directly over where the water came in, but that did not even help. 
So for probably 24 hours, this was gushing water straight out into the chicken coop. He said a lot of the chickens were not walking around and were just kind of sitting up on the roosting bars. They wouldn't get down even if he was in there uh, because it was just full of water. And unfortunately that water ran under the wall and over to where my solar batteries are and the solar system is on this side. One of the batteries slightly got wet on the bottom, so I'm gonna have to check that out. And then some of my tools that I had laying on the ground were wet, and I'm drying those out and trying to prevent rust. Luckily, the waterer that I built has a five gallon capacity, and the chickens had plenty of water. My 14 chickens had plenty of water for the next five days, even though I had my friend shut the water off. If you haven't seen our video on how to build that chicken water, please click on this link at the top of the screen. Now, I'm not gonna take you in there. It is absolutely disgusting after that water was sitting everywhere inside, especially because the feeders that I had, even though they were up, the chickens threw out all the feed onto the floor in the water. And it hasn't dried out yet. So of course, I'm fixing plumbing and I am scraping everything out of here as quickly as I possibly can. A good thing is that the capacity of my feeders for my chickens lasted with no problem. Even though they threw out a lot of it, it did feed them over the past week plus. And if you haven't seen my video on how to make those feeders, please click on the video at the top of the screen. So friends, can you take a break from your homestead? Absolutely you can, but you have to have things set up and planned properly. But here's a beautiful thing. My family and I take a rest day every week, every seventh day actually. So we don't do any work on the property. We go to church and relax and breathe because God gave us a day to rest every single week to worship him and spend time with family and spend time in nature. And for us, our family observes the biblical Sabbath of Saturday or the seventh day of the week. So I look forward to that blessing every single week. It is so nice to have that downtime to spend with my creator and my family. And it's funny because secular studies have also shown that taking a break every seven days is incredibly invigorating for your body, for your mind, and it is absolutely needed because that's the way God created us. So if you're not doing that, maybe give it a try and see if that helps you out. So friends, I hope that helps you with some strategies on how to take a break from your homestead and maybe take a break once a week on your homestead. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Have a beautiful blessed day and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.